The Conservative Party, Redeemers, or the Democratic Party, were engaging in trying to have voter suppression for the most part, trying to intimidate potential Republican voters from not voting in the polls and allow the Democrats to take over these state governments. The most infamous group that practiced these types of, of intimidation and murder were the Ku Klux Klan. It was set up in 1865 as a group of well-to-do men, and it became a force of violence in the South. By 1867, it turned into an organization across the South, with a former Confederate officer leading it, the Imperial Wizard. What they did is engaged in night ridings, whippings, murders against blacks, carpetbaggers, and scalawags. Now, technically, the Klan will go out and get out of existence in 1869, but the Klan type activity continued. The reason you hear so much about the Klan is that it was revived in 1915 and was very powerful in the 1920s. We'll get to that later. Under the pressure of Klan-type activity, the Republican state governments begin to falter and fail. As the Republicans begin to lose, especially when Klan-type activity was strongest, they begin to do something about it. They got Congress to help. And Congress will respond by passing two laws. One is called the Force Act. It might You can also find it as the Enforcement Act. And what it did was it made it a crime to interfere with a person trying to cast his vote. It became a federal offense and authorized the use of federal troops to protect a person's right to vote. In 1871, the KKK Act is going to be signed. It outlawed any type of Klan activity and made it a federal offense, even allowing the President of the United States himself to declare martial law and send troops into areas with heavy Klan activity. These acts by Congress had some success, but it only really succeeded in prolonging the inevitable in terms of the fall of these Republican state governments. After the early 1870s, Congress just stopped trying. By the early 1870s, support for re Republican re Reconstruction began to weaken, particularly in the North. For example, in 1872, the Freedmen's Bureau was allowed to just go out of existence everywhere in the South. It left the state governments, you know, those stales, those same state governments that were passing black codes, yeah, those, uh, responsible for, the, for protecting the rights of freedmen. The federal government wasn't going to do it anymore. In 1872, there's going to be the General Amnesty Act, which gave back the right to hold office to about any white Southerner, with, of course, the exception of Robert E. Lee and Jefferson Davis. In fact, Congress will pass a law to allow Davis to write the vote in 1979. I'm not kidding. He was the last person to be able to be getting this right. Lee was next to last. In 1874, the Democrats actually took control of the House of Representatives. What that shows you is that with only nine years removed from the end of the Civil War, the Democrats could win control of the House of Elections by winning elections in the North. People in the North were concerned less and less with re Reconstruction. So why is there a weakening support? Well, how long has this been going on? It's human nature to basically lose interest after something has just basically gone on too long. For example, if I keep on talking, guess what? You're just going to click to the next video, right? So, a lot of people were just simply tired of hearing and dealing with the issue. Another issue was that the old leaders were gone. Thaddeus Stevens, whose thoughts felt strongly about the issue, was dead. Another reason was the fact that the Republican Party was so heavily corrupt at the time that some people even said it needed Reconstruction and Reformation more than the South. This would show up in the election of 1872. Grant would re run for re-election. But by this time, their corruption in the Republican Party was beginning to show on the national level. So much so that the Republicans left, some Republicans left their party in 1872 and started to call themselves liberal Republicans. They ran a newspaper editor, Horace Greeley, on a platform that they would clean up the party. By the way, the Democrats saw this and they didn't even run their own candidate. They just endorsed Greeley. So two Republicans were running over the issue of corruption. Grant would win re-election in 1872. But the point is that people were starting to think about other things other than Reconstruction.